I just um, really am so grateful that we have this discussion and that the committee voted to approve this because I think that um, the benefits in this age group uh, are, are really um, super important, even if they are um, lower per se than older age groups. Uh, I think this is an age group that deserves and, and should have the same opportunity to be vaccinated as every other age. Thank you, Dr. Crone. Dr. Levy. Assuming the FDA approves and it goes to ACIP, if they produce a recommendation that says that there'll be discretion and how it's used as opposed to a mandate, which I think we are, would all be concerned about at this point, we are going to get plenty of experience with it. Um, the good pharmacovigilance plans, I think, are going to be very useful, and we will know how, uh, how safe this is. Um, I, I agree with Dr. Cohn. You want to save the kids you can save. I do think that we, it will be useful to have a lot more information, though, to determine how best to deploy the vaccine. So I, I'm still, I, 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 I think that we're, we, we ended up sort of in between. We decided to vote for it with, uh, a, with a lot of heavy conscience. Um, and, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that this is the start of learning more about it. Yeah, this has been uh, a fascinating day, and I'd like to thank uh, FDA and, and the sponsor and CDC and everyone for a very thoughtful discussion. Um, there are a number of broad-based principles here that are converging. Uh, one of them was touched on by Dr. Gantz, which is the concept of including children. In fact, there's something called the Pediatric Research Initiative, or PRI, that was passed uh, on the federal level to include uh, children in biomedical research. And, uh, and, and we're happy to see uh, that studies are being done because this pandemic is clearly affecting them both directly and indirectly, as, as we've heard today. Uh, and so I very much welcome uh, these data, and in, in many ways, they're promising. And still, the challenge we face, uh, based on the question that we're confronted with now as committee members, is it's a risk-benefit uh, or benefit-risk uh, analysis and uh, FDA, you know, has made an effort, taken uh, great effort and, and presented to us today and taken a lot of questions about these different models. And we see that we can reach uh, different conclusions to some extent based on the assumptions that the models uh, are built on. And one of the factors, uh, of course, is uh, how much coronavirus is circulating in a community at a given point in time. Uh, and then other, other factors as well. What will the actual uh, myocarditis rate be in these younger kids who, who may be less susceptible to myocarditis? But right now, that's, that's a speculation. We don't know, know that for sure. And, and, the, and the studies were empowered uh, really to, to answer that question in the 5 to 11-year-olds. Um, so uh, I'm just pointing out some broad-based themes that are running through my mind as we're having this conversation. Uh, it's a very meaningful one. And uh, I, I also am wondering whether uh, the prevailing conditions uh, could somehow work their way into our recommendations, because after all, that's the spirit of an EUA. It's authorized in the setting of a public health emergency, which we're in now, but one that is fluid. So I'm going to leave my comments there, uh, but I hope they're helpful. Thank you, Dr. Monto. Yes, very helpful, because we are in a fluid situation, and that's why it's a good thing we've got an emergency use authorization and not an amendment or any, anything like that to, to the license. But we are confronted with a binary choice as indicated in the voting question. And keep that in mind as we move ahead to Dr. Rubin. Thanks, Dr. Monto. Uh, the, um... This is a much tougher one, I think, than we had expected uh, coming into it. Uh, the data show that the vaccine works and it's pretty safe, at least by immune abridging, and, and even by some clinical data, uh, some early clinical data. And yet, we're worried about all of these. Um, we're worried about a side effect that we can't measure yet, um, and, and but it's, it's probably real, and we are we see a benefit that isn't the same as it is in older age groups. So for me, I think it's going to revolve around two questions. First off, how, whether there 
is going to be a use for this vaccine in this age group, and then the how the decision gets made to use it in that, in, in, uh, within this age group. And I think what sways me here is that it is a very sort of personal choice. If I had a child who had who was a transplant recipient, I would really want to be able to use a vaccine like this. And there are certainly kids who probably should be vaccinated. The question of how broadly we use it, though, I think is a substantial one. Um, and I know it's not our question, but I, I, I and I know we're kind of punting that uh, to uh, ACIP. Um, but I, I, I do think that it's a relatively close call. And as Dr. Levy just said, as Dr. Gann said, it, it really is going to be a question of what the prevailing conditions are. But we're never going to learn about how safe the vaccine is unless we start giving it. Yeah, um, that's just the way it goes. That's how we found out about rare complications of other vaccines, like the rotavirus vaccine. And I, I do think that we are going to, I, I do think we should vote to approve it. 